Okay, so welcome to the LCI 713 Amphibious Forces Memorial Museum. We have a website called www.amphibiousforces.org. This is a World War II landing craft. It's 158 feet long, weighs 200 tons of displacement, and it's about 21 feet wide, the beam. This is a flat bottom ship. It was designed to pull up onto the beach, open the bow ramp through those doors. You see the clamshell doors right there on the three. And uh, so I'm gonna take you on a walkthrough tour and you can see what it was like to be on a World War II landing craft. So this here is our treasurer, Mark Stevens. Hi, Mark, say hi. <laughs> Mark's got paint. <laughs> Gotta buy more paint. Because, of, because a World War II ship needs to be painted a lot. So, we're just walking back here to the gangplank, the brow. Hopefully I won't fall off. So this was built to uh, carry 200 troops onto the beach and uh, they would stay down below in bunks. The original version just had like a ferry benches like a ferry boat so the first thing we'll see is the uh, the number one gun deck up here on the forecastle this is a 20 millimeter cannon you see here the uh, I think it's a mark 2 gun mount for the 20 millimeter you can elevate it and depress the gun with the big spring here you can turn it around and point it the gun is down below. And then you can see the, the white numbers on the splinter shield, which are for the relative bearing in case like a uh, enemy targets coming in from this direction, then the lookout sees it and he calls to all the gunners. You know, it's coming from 90 and everyone points their gun. This right here is a ammunition ready service storage locker and inside of it, would be eight 60 round drums of ammunition for the 20 millimeter cannon. This right here is a barrel cooling tube. And when the gun barrels get too hot, after you shoot about 300 rounds, you would grab the barrel and dunk it in the tank and cool it off. That would be full of water normally. And then that round pipe is so you can stand on, so you could depress the gun barrel and also you won't trip on the spent shells that are rolling around on the deck. So there's an anchor up on here on the bow. You can see right there going through the house pipe. And there's another one on the stern. So you could basically uh, let the anchor out when you came into the beach and pull yourself off the beach backwards. Now you can also see the other gun tubs. There's number two, number three, and then back behind the the big uh, pilot house is the number four and number five. So they would have had five 20 millimeter cannons. So we're going down here to the well deck and we have a winch right there. It's a gasoline powered engine winch. we are getting used to haul in the anchor or the landing ramp. Here's the landing ramp right here. This is called the forecastle. And you uh, see that there's the clamshell doors right down there. You can open that up and then pull the ramp out so the troops can run down and hit the beach. You have the uh, troop head and a sea anchor. And those black cans are aero foam, which is uh, for putting out oil fires. It makes a foam. Then over here, you go down there and let me see. That hatch goes to a, uh, a bosun's locker where we keep lines and fenders and stuff like that. And now this is troop compartment number one and there would have been 43 troops down here. And we've got this all fitted out to where it's completed now. This would have been 43 troops in these four high bunks. And it's really cramped down here as you can see. There's a tank under there. We're working on these tanks. Um, there would have been oil in those tanks, like diesel 
fuel or fog oil. And then you can see in here these bunks. The troops wouldn't have had mattresses. They would have just had these fold up, these are called pipe racks. And we got all these couple of hundred of life jackets. So right here, this is kind of interesting, is the uh, voice tube communication system. Let's see, it's kind of hard to see with the... So there's a bell right here and then this push button that rings a bell up on the bridge and when they want to talk to us they they ring this bell and then we answer the voice tube right here and they can communicate back and forth and then if we want to talk to them we ring the bell and then they answer the they answer the voice tube <laughs> so anyway uh, we just finished fixing up this painting it and insulating it so it's uh, pretty much the way it would have looked um, this is a flat bottom boat, so it would be rocking and rolling a lot. And so all the troops that came on the ship, most of them got seasick, as you can imagine, because a flat bottom ship rocks and rolls a lot. Anyway, so we're going back to the deck house where the cruise mess is and uh, some other compartments. So we're going in here. We're gonna come in here. So this right here shows a picture of this ship when it came back from from the war to Los Angeles. That's uh, what's that town in Los Angeles where that was? Long Beach. No, it's the oil. They have a lot of oil wells there. Anyway, I can't remember. So uh, we happen to have uh, two World War II LCI veterans here. We've got Gordon Smith. He was on LCI 43. He was a quartermaster. And we have Tom Barnett. And Tom, you were a cook, right? Ship's cook? Ship's cook, second class. <laughs> Back in the And your LCI was LCI? 727. 727, okay. So, uh, it was a G, 727. So a G, I haven't explained to them what that means. A G means they took all the troop, all the troop compartments out and they filled it with, they had a bunch of guns and ammo yeah. so they could support the landings on the beach from close in, right? Yeah, it's like, crew of 65? Pardon? Your crew? Yeah, it was 61. Double Six, crew. 61. So you were in the Pacific, right? And yeah. Gordon, you were in the Mediterranean, right? And Anzio. Mm -hmm. Okay. We were supposed to go in ahead of the infantry. Right, and clear the beaches, right? Okay. So this compartment that we're in is called the forward cruise mess, or the only cruise mess, actually. Yeah. And so there's these tables that fold down from the from the bulkhead, the wall. And you can see this one here is one of those tables. And you can also see a model of one of these LCIs, and you can see the four gun mounts on it. See the 20 millimeter cannons on there? Got here and here, and you can see the ramp is open. So uh, we're also a proud member of the U.S. LCI National Association. In fact, we're having a we're hosting a convention here this September. And you can also see over here is the uh, it's uh, helmets and gas masks are supposed to be on this shelf. Also, if you look up, you have all these life jackets up in the overhead. And what they do is you can sponsor a life jacket like a brick in the museum, right? And uh, if you pay a certain amount of money, you can, uh, you can sponsor your own life jacket with your own, uh, you know, words on there to like dedicate it to somebody. Anyway, so we're going in here and didn't want to pass. We also have the troop officers now if they would have had 200 troops a rifle company size and there would be officers associated with the rifle company and so the they would stay in here instead of down there in the compartment with the troops so there would be nine officers or room for nine and also the ship's doctor would stay in here who would be an enlisted man he'd probably be a pharmacist mate and he also knew how to type, so he would be the ship's secretary. <laughs> when you had a crew of 25 guys, 
the the regular Grand craft only had 25 crew, and that includes the officers. Yeah, those were And then down here, you've got a couple of uh, troop compartments. Another one is number three right there that holds 65. And then this is troop compartment number two, which also holds 63. Let me turn on the lights here. So we've got here, see right there, it says, uh, this is 62 men, see? So this would be just as crowded as that first one, except we removed all the stuff because we're, we're trying to fix it up like a museum, right? So here we are, we have our new donor board, people that have donated money, $100 donors. And then we've got some uh, 20 millimeter cannon magazines that hold 60 rounds each that hang on these racks, these clips on the, on the bulkhead. And then also there's different kinds of LCIs as you might have seen. You have this one here which is made for the British. It's a square con. And then you have this one which is similar to ours except it doesn't have a bow ramp, it has a side ramp. Then you've got this kind which is a round con center ramp. I hope you can see that. And then they also took the same hull and they put a bunch of guns on it and took off the bow ramps completely. And then this was uh, LCS, landing craft support. So it's the same length, that's 158 feet, but they carry like three inch cannons, 40 millimeters. So here we are, back in here, this is a picture of an LCI being boarded by about 37 troops and all those guys would stay down in one compartment plus more. And here's our LCI flag again, the United States LCI and National Association. And then over here, this is kind of dedicated to the 41st Division, which is a Army Division that they landed off of this ship in Zamboanga, Philippines. And this is the landing diagram of where they landed. Hopefully you guys can see this, it's not out of focus. So they landed on, uh, I want to say it was Red Beach 2. They were in the seventh wave. You can see the seventh wave there. Anyway, so the Sunset Division, 41st Division, still around, I think, and um, they're all based in Washington and Oregon states. And uh, they had a uh, patch on their shoulder that says it's like a sunset, right? And it was called the Sunset Division. Well, there's Highway 26, which is in Portland, Oregon. And it's named the Sunset Highway after the Sunset Division, so it's kind of cool. Anyway, over here is uh, another model of another LCI. This is an LCI sailor's uniform. You can see that red patch on his shoulder right there. It's an anchor with an eagle and a tom Tommy gun. And uh, that's the Amphibious Forces uh, patch. I think uh, if you were amphibious landing group like a you know a troop you would be a, have a blue it would be blue so the Navy guys would wear the red patch like that now this is kinda like Tom's ship it's a LCI gun the 470 you can see instead of 20 millimeter cannons they had 40 millimeter bofers there in number two and three and in number one gun positions and they had rockets. They took off those side ramps and they put rocket launchers. You see those rocket launchers right there? And then the, the back end was the same as this one. So down here, this is kind of like an impromptu museum. And uh, we have, uh, this is Gordon Smith's ship's flag. This is this battle flag from the LCI 43. They landed at Anzio Beach in Italy and uh, that is a streamer pennant, they call it. And that was the one they flew during Anzio, which is kind of neat. The old 48 star flags, and you can see it's flown and got you know torn up by the wind. This is an army uniform that you can see the, the troops that would land would wear these inflatable life vests. They're kind of like a belt. 
and they have this the cartridges or a mouth inflation tube right here I think this is actually upside down so just to see what the guys would be wearing this is a captured Japanese flag that was captured at right at the end of the war from the vicinity of Shanghai and it was on a minesweeper and the guys that got it was uh, Richard Adair and his sons Tom and Ken actually um, donated this flag to us so it's kinda cool because they captured this they just rode their boat this is like the day after the war like September the 3rd 1945 they <laughs> They rode their little dinghy over there to where the Japanese were, still on their ship, and they just didn't say a word. Japanese crew was still on it. They walked right up, lowered their flag, threw it over the shoulder, rode back to their ship. <laughs> now this is the, uh, I think this was the, yeah, Bob Heath got this one, and his sons Craig, Don, and Gary donated it. This is LCI Flotilla 13. This is the Black Cat Flotilla. Now, they were, Flotilla has like 12 LCI ships or maybe even 24 on some of them. And uh, they landed in the Pacific, like Palau and Peleliu, places like that. Anyway, they would raise this flag up, which meant they were the command ship. And when you raise up the black cat flag, that would mean it was time to go hit the beach. So it was like a battle flag. It's kind of cool. And then we have another LCVP because it's an amphibious ship or a landing craft. A lot smaller, this would only carry like 35 guys. And then we got a Vietnam era PCF, which is like John Kerry was on, you know, and he was he served in Vietnam. And uh, anyway, so the PCF, there's a, there's a boat down in um, San Diego, which they have just finished fixing up. And um, there's a, uh, you can, if you're down in San Diego, go to the Maritime Museum and check out their PCF. Anyway, so that's it for the, uh, this would have been full of bunks. There would have been, like I said, 62 bunks down here, but we have it sort of as an impromptu museum. Now here again, you can see the call bell, so you can uh, communicate with the bridge through the voice tube right, right there. The voice tube is supposed to have a cover over it. And we're coming up here. Hello. Hi. So I'm just uh, walking through the, I'm filming the thing. Anyway, so this over here is the, uh, right off of the cruise mess. And this is the XO and engineer stateroom. And he had a desk and a porthole and bunk beds, so two guys in here. They would have been like an ensign or maybe Lieutenant JG. Then in here, oh yeah, you can see this picture here that shows these guys sitting there at this fold up table. See, it folds up against the wall and they're just uh, writing letters home, looks like. Then in here is the radio room. Let me turn on the light. So the radio room is kind of cool. Here, I'll let the lights warm up. Come back to the radio room. So this is called the messing and clipping room. And uh, we have a surgery light here, so you could uh, possibly do surgery on people. See the, uh, the light there, so you can point it. And uh, this whole table, if you look at it, just simply has a hinge right there. It's got a hinge right there and it like folds up against the wall. Anyway, so you can see throughout the ship we have all these life jackets that have been sponsored by people. So you should get in on this action because it's really cool. We only have a limited amount left. Hi. Then in here is the radio room. So the radio room has a locking door on it. The locking door is important because you know, you have secret information in here, communication security. So anyway, this is also the chart board, the chart storage in those drawers. And this is a uh, map of D-Day. This is uh, Omaha Beach East, from Colville-sur-Mer. 
didn't say that right. But anyway, so you have uh, Easy Red right here, Fox Green, Fox Red, Easy Green. So uh, LCIs were used to land on D-Day uh, at Omaha Beach. And over here is the radios. So you've got Collins TCS radio transmitter and receivers, and also some ship's entertainment radios. You also have a typewriter because you would have to type all the stuff, that, all the messages. Yeah, and then you know there would be like Morse code and uh, voice you could use. So yeah, that's the radio room, and then uh, down here is the cruise quarters. So it's directly below the mess messing and clipping room and the radio room. Right is the cruise quarters. So the cruise quarters. I'm gonna turn on the lights. Now they have a little bit better, nicer accommodations because they stayed on the ship all the time, whereas the troops didn't. So this would have had 25 troops down, I mean crew, down here. They have lockers and everything. So here's a locker, a whole bank of lockers there. And then you can see these, these bunks, there's only three of them, not four. So it's a little bit nicer and they actually had mattresses and, uh, you know, sheets, the whole deal. And these would be uh, also pipe racks, you know, with the canvas. This is canvas and it's just sort of tied in there. And uh, yeah, so there would have been 24 bunks. We just have 12 of them set up right now, but the other 12 would be right over here in this empty space. And we actually have the bunks, we just have to put them in. And over here is the gyroscope. Now, uh, this is a, uh, I don't know, what mark and make it is, but it, it like it's on gimbals and you know, gyroscope. So it would tell you uh, the compass direction even when we're at sea. Now one thing is, we went back to Stevenson, Washington and said, because this ship used to be like a derelict on the beach there and we took in, well, another guy that got it first. But you know, people went on the boat and they took stuff. Well, we put a newspaper ad in Stevenson's paper and said, hey, remember that old ship? If there anyone has anything from that ship, we'd really like it back. And so we got this locker back and we got some silverware and stuff. So inside of it, we still have, there's a, still a couple of uh, pinup girls, this one here and this one here. I think that's like a Gypsy Rose Lee. I'm not really sure who that is. But anyway, um, so we added some other famous pinup girls like, you know, Betty Grable and Jane Russell. Anyway, and her, I don't know her name, but uh, anyway, so yeah, it's kind of cool down here. And uh, so this right here is the exhaust stove pipe, so it would keep it warm from the boiler. And going up, we're going to go over to the officers, well, actually the, the captain. This is the captain's stateroom. And he was, uh, they originally had set, set it up with two bunks in here, but you know, the captain being the captain normally would not do that. And he would just take the extra bunk out. And we put some uh, donated uniforms that we're, we're gonna display in here. Anyway, so, see the old uh, captain's helmet and, and the pith helmet up there. And so yeah, it was pretty nice. And the captain had his own call bell and a voice tube. He could talk to the bridge on this one. He could talk to uh, the other stations on here. Anyway, so, got that. Now in here is the officer's wardroom where the officer's eating area was. Now if you look right here, you can see this picture where they're all sitting around and you see they've got that got that toaster. I'm really big on toasters if you haven't seen my other videos. Anyway, so these guys are sitting around and they got some uh, tablecloth and some stuff on this. It looks like bread and butter, some cereal. So anyway, we have found some recent additions where we got you know the silverware on there and you can see the toaster see it right there so it's a toast well 
it's really cool. And yeah, so the officers had a pretty nice eating area. And then in here is the officer's head. Now the officer's head is a bathroom, right? So uh, they had their own toilet. They had their sinks and a shower. And I believe this might have been a freshwater shower. Or it might have been a saltwater shower. And there I am in the mirror. So anyway, they had their drink holders and we're trying to get this plumbing all connected. That would be really cool. Right now it's just sort of there. It's not connected. So in here is a plan of the ship. And you can look at it. You can see all the compartments. So there's two decks. There's the main deck here and then the hold. And the hold is split up into like all the trip compartments. Trip compartment one, two, three, cruise quarters, engine room, trip compartment number four, and this rudder room. And um, over here is the galley. Galley is the word for a kitchen on a ship. And this one, we got, uh, we're supposed to have a couple of diesel stoves in here, right? So if you know where a diesel stove is, it looks like this. We're looking. See, it's, uh, I don't even know who makes it, but they're like cast iron and they've got a blower. See, there's an air blower right there. And they're uh, drip supplied with a uh, gravity feed, I think, for diesel fuel. Now we have that, that's the right there. See that diesel fuel tank? That's for the stove and it just drips down. And over here you can see a bunch of guys standing around eating bologna sandwiches, looks like, in the galley. And you can see behind this guy is the smokestacks from the two stones. It's called the Charlie Noble. And uh, yeah, so this was the center of activity on most LCIs. You can see the old, uh, old utensils, the frying pans and such. And then we have the, uh, they call this the, the, the sink, the dresser, so you could uh, do food preparation on here. And uh, it's supposed to curve around, and there's supposed to be a door right there that goes to a walk-in refrigerator. We have the door, we just need to cut the hole and put it there. You can see that we're, supposed, we're missing a big coffee maker. See this coffee maker? It's supposed to be right there. Now there's a whole bunch more, um, you know, utensils that we got from Stevenson, Washington right there. Those are all the Navy cooking utensils. Anyway, so what they would do is they would close this door and the guys would come up with their trays. See, so I'll get you a tray here. These old steel, these old steel trays, see? And so you would uh, take your tray, kind of like in a cafeteria, and you put your tray there, and the cook would slop the stuff from the stove onto your tray, and then you go sit down and eat. So that's the that's the theory. So it's a Dutch door. Anyway, so you come in here, and you can see the the drop um, leaf there. You know, it's like a serving line. Hey, Woody. Hey, Jerry. Taking a video. Good. Anyway, back here is the after cruise head. And there are some deep, deep sinks in here, like these guys. And uh, this is an old washing machine, you can see. See with the agitator and the ringer. So the way you would operate this ringer is you press this button and those two rollers would go and squeeze all the water out. So you wouldn't want to get anything caught in there because it might hurt. Anyway, so there's supposed to be another sink right there. Then back in here is another couple of sinks so you could just like, I guess you could shave. Then there's a sink there. Now, curiously missing in the crew's head is the, um, you know, the latrine. <laughs> there would have been two of them, the heads that you would sit on and they would be right in this area here. Now we have a photograph we got a lot of these photographs from, from the same ship. So there's some guys sitting on the head, which is kind of funny. They would sit three to a, to a head. Yeah, kind of interesting. And uh, anyway, so you come in here, and this is the walk-in refrigerator, which is, you know, it's just a tool storage area now. And then you come down here to the uh, troop compartment number four. 
and this would have held 26 guys. So we we're using as a tool storage area. And it's really loud in the engine room, but I'll sh look through the hole here. So you can see right down there is the big hole. There's two of them for the big quad diesel engine. And there's the old DC switchboard with the knife switches. You see them all? See all those knife switches? Then we have a CO2 hose reel with the twin CO2 tanks. And we have a, we have a generator there and a generator over there. So uh, they would have supplied the ship with DC power, although we have it fitted for AC. Anyway, so you can see this knife switch is uh, basically it's, uh, the way it would have been, but it's a false front. We don't actually energize all those open knife switches because that's kind of dangerous. <laughs> and I don't want to shock myself by operating this. Thing. So, but it looks exactly like it would have. Anyway, so that's the engine room. Then you come in here, and we've got, this is kind of cool. See this? All right, if you look at that, oh wait, let me turn off. Yes, it does, yeah. Passageway. Oh no. There it is. So if you look at this, hey, hey Rick, oh wait, I got it, never mind. Just hold it right there, okay. So you see these guys, this was taken like the day before D-Day. These guys are troops about to land on D-Day, right? Now if you look in the background, see over this guy's head, there's a door frame. And you look there, see? Same door frame. So I think they took that picture from right about here. So if we had four guys with uniforms on, we could have them reenact this photograph. Anyway, so yeah, it's kind of cool. And I think that guy right there kind of looks familiar like he's a famous movie star. Maybe he looks like Frank Sinatra. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, so yeah. Now this would have had 20, 26 bunks down here. So it would have been pretty crowded. Anyway, you come in here. And this is our ammunition locker. And it would have had a flooding system. See the flooding system right here. And uh, so you could flood it with firemen if it got too hot. Then over here is the dry storage compartment. And uh, we have, uh, well, we have stuff in here, but there would have been food, like cans of food, you know, like green beans and stuff like that. And then back here in the very back is the very aft end of the boat is the, uh, oh, I hope it's unlocked. Well, it's the rudder room and it's locked. <laughs> so there's the electric rudders that are back there. Okay, so now I'm going to go up to the bridge. So, go up the, the ladder here. And you see we've got this ship pretty well fixed up on the inside and out. It's looking really good since we uh, got it. So, up here is the ladder that goes to the bridge. Now this is that conning tower. And so inside here would be several, huh, must have burned out that light bulb. Anyway, there would be uh, two watchstanders. If you look right here at this picture, see the guy sitting there? He's sitting on a stool and he's got his hand on the steering wheel. Now it's an electric steering, like I said. So here's the stool. And there's the electric steering. So basically it's a motor that goes back and forth and turns the rudder. And he would look at the rudder angle indicator, which is right up there, and tell you which direction the rudder is pointing. Then he could also look at the inclinometer and the barometer and the clock there and there. And then also we have a gyro repeater. Remember the gyro I showed you down in troop, troop birthing? I mean cruise birthing? So this is the, the repeater, it's like a compass. Now this is a magnetic compass. You see the, the two big balls on either side? That's, those are made out of iron, so they can correct for the magnetism of the ship. And uh, we're supposed to have this mounted here in a little holder box. 
and this is a um, MagnaSign compass. The actual MagnaSign compass power supply is right there, and then the actual sensing unit is up on the mast. So now this is the heart of the ship where you have the communication center. This is also the watchstander's desk. So he would have a chart here of where he's going. Remember we had the invasion chart of D-Day, so this is the same chart. And then, uh, oh, I forgot, this is the uh, engine order telegraph right here. So you go ching ching, and you would tell the guys down in the engine room what, how fast you want to go, right? And then the guy that, the helmsman would sit here and steer the boat, steer the ship. Now, the communications thing with the voice tubes, right? So you've got all these push buttons so I can talk to the engine room or the radio room, the troop officer stateroom, the XO stateroom, the CO stateroom. Or I could come down here and talk to the steering room or any of the four troop compartments, right? So I press these buttons and a bell rings. Then I open the voice tube and yell at them. Or I can yell at the troop spaces through this one. So it's two separate voice tubes. Now, these are the uh, light for the navigation lights. And right here, if they, if they buzz me, like one of the troops buzzes me, this is an enunciator and it drops down and tells me who is buzzing me. And the buzzer is right there. It's just an electric buzzer. So you hear that buzz and then you go, hmm, who buzzed me? And then you know which voice tube to answer. They also had sound powered phones, which are these things. You have to talk into them and your voice actually makes them work. Vibrates a little diaphragm and causes an electric current. Anyway, so this is kind of neat. Um, so we can just walk outside onto the deck. Now remember this is gun compartment or guns number four and five. And then back here, I mean that's number two and three, I'm sorry. This is number four and five. Now I'm gonna show you the uh, the stern. So we have a stern anchor and uh, the stern anchor is there and then right underneath that tarp is a big gasoline powered winch that we use to pull in the stern anchor so we can pull ourselves off the beach which is kind of neat and there's some life some lifeboats here there's a raft and that's a uh, little rowboat there and then again you can see the uh, you can see the depression rails that you can stand on and the gun cooling tube over here is the flag bag which we're having a boy scout and he's going to make us a new one because this one's kind of rotten now up here is the the con now the con's kind of cool because this is where the officer and the signalman would sit and steer the boat now if you look at this thing it's a venturi so the air would go up and go up through there and it would be blasted out here straight up and it'd be like an invisible windshield especially when the ship is moving through the water you have a constant wind so this invisible shield of air would keep the wind from blowing in your face theoretically now you have these two seats there's that one there for the signal one you see the crow's nest where you can crawl up and do his little signal flags and then over here is the conning officer's seat and so he would sit here and he could yell through a, a voice tube like a megaphone that goes down where that coffee can is there's a voice tube and then there's two other voice tubes right there we're supposed to have a desk right here which comes out and it's covered over with a tarp you see these hooks those are for grommets so you can turn on this red light at night and look at the map you know stick your head underneath the tarp it's kind of like a little tent with a head hole. So you stick your head in there and look at the, the map. And then, uh, you know, to, to steer the ship, you basically just sit right up here and say, turn right, you know. <laughs> so yeah, this is, here, this is kind of like the, the conning officer's view of the ship. So you got, you can see up there where we started, there's the number one gun mount. And then the, the well deck. And if you come up here, you can see number two and number three gun tubs. Let's see if I can 
show you that better. Yeah, there's number two, and that's number three. Two's on the port. Then we come back here, and you can see the engine room exhaust ventilator right there, the scoop for the uh, galley, and gun tubs number four, number five, and then the, the stern with the, the flag, the ensign. Anyway, right here, We've got the halyards, which we would normally have some signal flags flying from. And then this one right there is straight up on the stern, well, on the faces towards the stern. And that was where the, uh, they would fly their uh, national ensign when we're underway. So come down here and go up to the front. So, we're always looking for more volunteers. Oh yeah, guess what this is? You've seen this before. This is another ammunition ready service ammo locker for the uh, 20 millimeter cannons. So coming down here and I'm gonna wrap up here. And I just wanted to thank you for going on the tour. And uh, hey, Tom, say goodbye to the guys, to the people on the on the YouTube. Okay. All right. So uh, hopefully we're we're going to have a lot of people that donate money to the to the AFMM, right? Yeah. And uh, so hopefully a lot of people will see that this is what the inside of a real LCI looks like. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks a lot, everybody, and we'll see you later. Okay.